Fireman Sam and the Dog's Birthday. It was the May Bank holiday. School children were enjoying the benefits of the banking sector taking a well-earned break, while some professions, for example those within the fire service, merrily continued with their gainful employment. In the days leading up to the bank holiday, Fireman Sam had expressed concern that Norman Price might find 24 hours of freedom too long to control his mischievous temperament. Hence he had requested that Norman and his friends, Mandy, Sarah and James, ought to look after the fire station's dog radar for the day. Such responsibility would give Norman purpose, or could possibly go awry. The children took the dog to the fairground, the Straw Face Museum and the Cactus Farm. Despite all this excitement, Norman was still a little bored, however, and he speculated as to other adventures on which they might embark. I saw a documentary on the Pets Channel last week, explained Norman, as a matter of introduction, and they said that one human year is equivalent to seven dog years. That makes Radar about thirty, laughed James. So it must be roughly time to celebrate his birthday, Norman reckoned, on the basis that with years so short, it was always going to be roughly time to celebrate a dog's birthday. The children went to the local low-budget supermarket. James bought Radar a rubber bone. Sarah bought Radar a carb with 30 on it. Mandy bought Radar a balloon to fetch. And Norman bought a birthday cake and candles. The children went to sit in an old barn to have a party. James played music on his iPod, and they all played musical statues. Even Radar, who unsurprisingly did not put his best efforts into terminating his dance moves when the music was temporarily silenced. Norman put 30 candles on the cake, and lit them with a match from a matchbox he kept in his pocket. Blow, Radar, blow, he instructed. Radar pursed his doggy lips and puffed as much as he could muster, but he was unable to extinguish a single candle. Once more he tried, and again and again, but to no avail. The flames grew taller and hotter, and still Radar's attempts lacked the necessary vigour. Although antiquated, the barn had a smoke alarm installed and regularly checked, and shortly it burst into life with a piercing shrill warning. The farmer dialed 999, and Fireman Sam and his colleagues were soon on sight, water gushing forth and destroying the jam sponge. Back at the station, Norman described the events that had culminated in the barn blaze. Fireman Sam was able to give sound practical advice and, as usual, relate the scenario to statistics. Dogs are notoriously incompetent at blowing out candles, Sam explained. As also featured in that documentary on the Pets Channel last week, Dogs take on average a hundred puffs to blow out the candles on a birthday cake. This can be modelled using a Poisson distribution. It takes six minutes for the flame from a cake's candles to start a fire in an old barn, in which time a dog can puff 85 times. So we would want to find the probability that X is less than or equal to 85 for lambda equals 100. Norman went to collect Fireman Sam's copy of the Pearson Edexcel formula book from the shelf. He turned to the page devoted to the Poisson distribution and looked for lambda equals 100. The table only goes up to ten, Norman noted. What are we to do? In these circumstances, began Fireman Sam, one must use an approximation. Providing that lambda is greater than ten, we can use the normal distribution to get reasonable answers. And a hundred will be both the mean and the variance, chipped in Penny, following her lesson the previous month. Sarah had studied the normal distribution at Sunday school. So we want the probability that x is less than 85 minus a hundred, all over the square root of a hundred. Is that right? Not quite, said Sam, because we are using a continuous distribution to approximate a discrete distribution. When that is incumbent upon us, we are required to employ what is commonly known as the half-continuity correction. It's as if each integer has a cloud surrounding it. So, for example, the integer 46 would start at 45.5 and finish at 46.5. Does that mean that since we wish to include 85, we actually need to find the probability it's less than 85.5, asked James? It sure does, nodded Feynman Sam. Impressed at both James's swift internalization of the statistical method and his own pedagogical abilities. They all tackled the problem over a curry with whiteboards and pens and arrived at a solution, as displayed here. Fireman Sam, called Norman, you know when you taught me the binomial distribution when I tried cooking the apple pie in the orchard? Fireman Sam had not forgotten. Can you use these approximation methods for the binomial distribution? And so it happened that Fireman Sam gave the children a lecture about how the binomial could be approximated by either the Poisson or the normal, depending on the circumstances. The n had to be large, no matter what, but that the Poisson was appropriate when p was small, and the normal when p was close to a half, although the official conditions were that both n p and n1 minus p were greater than 5. 
that the mean for a binomial was np and the variance was np1 minus p and that if both the Poisson and the normal were permitted then the Poisson was usually superior due to being discrete like the binomial and hence a half continuity correction could only be required when using the normal. That was a lot of information announced Norman unable to recall all the concepts presented in Sam's monologue. Could you show me some concrete examples? Feynman Sam nodded patiently and told Norman that he would put a couple at the end of the YouTube video which would tell the tale of the dog's birthday and that all he would have to do would be to pause the video and read them through. Thank you, Fireman Sam, said Norman, before logging on to rate my teachers and giving Fireman Sam five for helpfulness and three for clarity.